What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Trevor and on today's episode, we are going to do a pre-season checklist on this 2020 Ski-Doo Expedition Extreme. We're gonna go over things like belt and clutch maintenance, chain case chain tension, we're gonna grease all the zerks on the rear suspension and just kind of do an overall walk around of the machine to make sure that we didn't miss anything post season last year. We don't want anything unexpected to happen while we're out on the trail that we could have prevented while we were in the garage. So first things first, let's remove the belt. All right, so we're gonna just take this cover off. Cover. On your belt cover, there's your tool. This is what you'll use to spread the secondary clutch. So let's do that now. Okay, once you have your tool, you're gonna take it and insert it into this hole and thread it in. As this threads in, it is spreading the secondary clutch apart, which is dropping that belt down, which is gonna allow you to slide the belt off pretty easily. We're gonna spread this clutch apart as much as possible uh, mainly for the next step, which is going to be cleaning the clutch sleeves. Okay, there it is. Now we're just going to walk this belt off. Once you have it spread so much, it makes things pretty easy. And there you go, belt is off. Okay, now that we have the belt off, the next step is to clean the belt. So we got a bucket of soapy water here. We're gonna rinse this in the soapy water just to clean the belt dust off of it and it will hook up a little better in the clutch. Okay, now we're just gonna rinse this clean and let it air dry. Now that you got the belt clean, the next step is to clean the clutches. We're gonna spray it out with shop air first and then go over it with a sponge and a little bit of soapy water. Now that we sprayed the clutches out with the shop air, the next step is to clean the inside of the clutch or the clutch sheaths with a damp sponge. And all we're trying to do here is get the belt residue off the clutch. This sponge has like a Brillo side to it. We can do that. We can buff it up a little bit really clean that clutch. And what this does is it helps that belt grip these clutches just a little bit easier.
another place that gets really dirty during the season is your brake. There's a bunch of brake dust and whatnot. We're again gonna spray it out with some shop air. And then we're gonna take our sponge, clean up all this brake dust and grime. That is what you're looking for right there. Look how clean that is. Cleaned up the bottom where all the brake dust and belt dust accumulates. It was dirtier than I initially thought. The clutches weren't too bad themselves, but everywhere else was pretty dirty. I'm glad I took it apart and cleaned it up. Here's the clutch, looks nice and clean now. We're gonna let this air dry overnight and put the belt on tomorrow and she's ready to go. All right, the next step is to grease the Zerks. I'm not gonna bore you guys with showing you how to do that, but I will show you where they are on this machine. Starting from the back, there's one on top of here. There's two down here, one right there, one up there. There's another one tucked up, it's really hard to see, right here. This is your rear shock, and there's one right here. All right, so we're ready to install the belt. The belt is directional. There are arrows pointing in the direction that it's supposed to go. Uh, the belt does spin counterclockwise, so we're just gonna follow those arrows, line that up, slide that in. Okay, now that we have the belt in the secondary clutch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda hold it out of the way as we turn this tool back out. When we do that, the clutch sleeves are going to come together and pinch the belt. So we will have to rotate the secondary clutch as we get around here. Luckily this machine has neutral so I don't have to have the track off the ground in order to spin it. If you have a summit, I've seen guys uh, without the track being Lifted, just kind of walk the belt around the secondary clutch to get it to seat properly. Let's see. Okay, we can take the tool out. We're gonna keep spinning this until, there we go. Okay, as you spin this belt around, what you're looking for is the valley of the belt tooth to be in line with the top of the clutch sheath. This one's looking pretty good, so I don't have to adjust it. However, if you were to adjust it, 
what you need to do is loosen this bolt right here and then spin this either counterclockwise or clockwise. Counterclockwise is gonna drop the belt further into the clutch and going clockwise is going to push the clutch plates together and push the belt out. Now that we got the belt installed on the other side, the next step is to tighten the chain in the chain case. These 850 motors have a lot of torque and have a tendency to stretch the chain during break-in. Plus with this particular model, it has a 20 inch wide track. So there's a lot of force being exerted on that chain. I already know this one's loose, but what we're gonna do is grab our tool with the Torx end. On the back side of the chain case, right about here is an adjustment bolt. I'll put a clip in right now where that is exactly. And we are gonna tighten it just with those two fingers uh, as tight as we can. This will ensure that we're not tightening the chain too much. It does take a little practice to get a feel for it, um, but it's super simple. We aren't going to change the chain case oil quite yet. Uh, I'm gonna wait until after break-in to do that. So let's tighten that chain. that's it. All right, now that we have the maintenance done, what we're gonna do is just a quick visual inspection of the machine. We'll start from the front and work our way to the back. We'll start with the skis. We're looking for anything like cracks, dings, dents, scratches, anything that's gonna hinder the performance of the ski. After that, we'll lift up the ski and check the carbide. This is a new machine, so I'm not too worried about that. Then from there, we're gonna take a look at the A-arms and steering linkages. Make sure that we didn't hit a log last season and it went unnoticed that we bent an A-arm. Then we'll look at the front shocks and we are looking for corrosion and the rebound on the shock. Poor rebound can indicate that you either need to rebuild the shock or replace the shock. From there, we're gonna work our way back to the brake. We did this a little bit when we cleaned the brake up, but now that it's clean, we can see if there's a leak at the brake line fitting right here. From there, you're gonna look at the rear suspension. And what I like to look at are your guide wheels. What happens a lot is a tree branch or a log will come in and uh, take a chunk out of your wheel. Your ride quality will suffer. The next thing I wanna look at are your high facts. Uh, it is a wearable item. It's plastic. Um, they usually last about two to 3,000 miles, depending on your riding. And the biggest thing on a snowmobile is your track. Um, this one's really good, but what you'll see is little hairs like this. And what I'll do is I'll take a torch and just burn that off. If you don't take care of that, what will happen is it'll be like a sweater or like a string from your t-shirt. It'll just get worse and worse and worse. So, yeah. Then we'll do the exact same thing on this side, working our way back to the front of the snowmobile. I like to work in a system like that, just so I don't lose anything or I don't miss anything rather than bouncing all over the machine. Something that did happen last year is I ripped off my grip. So there will be a video 
on replacing this very soon. Also, Skidoo just called me yesterday to let me know that my glove box extension is in and ready for pickup, so I'm pretty stoked about that. There'll be an install video on that as well. Well, I hope you got value out of that video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment. It'll help me tremendously. I'm trying to grow this channel to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Until next time, thank you.